Today's lesson is a combination of chapter 4.2 in the textbook and chapter 4.3. It's a bit of a longer lesson because we're amalgamating two individual lessons. Um, so hopefully this is not too long um, and hopefully you understand all information presented to you today. So we are continuing on from 4.1, which was yesterday's lesson uh, in solving equations. But today we're going to solve more complicated multi-step equations and even equations using fractions. So before we start that, we're just going to recall what we learned yesterday. So we learned how to solve simple equations. Remember, a solving means finding the value of an unknown variable. So the steps one, two, and three are listed there for you as to how to solve. So I'm just going to complete these two examples. 8 minus 2b is equal to 11. I'm going to isolate my variable by bringing my 8 over to the other side, and it becomes its opposite operation. Then I'm going to simplify my right side, and then I'm going to continue to isolate for my variable by bringing that negative 2 to the other side, and it's multiplication on the, on the left side, so it becomes a division on the right. And I'm just going to write that uh, negative sign in front of the fraction. Let's try this next one. I'm going to isolate my 4w by bringing the negative 3 over to the left side, and it becomes its opposite operation. I'm going to simplify my left side. And then I'm going to isolate w by bringing my 4 to the other side, to the left side. 4 is multiplication on the right side, and it becomes division on the left. I can't uh, reduce my fraction, and I'm, I'm, it doesn't reduce to a whole number, so I'm just going to leave it in fraction form. And now remember, when you're following, uh, when you're solving, uh, make sure that you're following the bed math steps in the opposite order when you're trying to isolate for a variable. So if we're looking at question A. Usually, bed math says that you saw uh, that you simplify multiplication first, but when we're isolating a variable, we actually do the opposite. So here's an addition, positive 8. So we're actually um, removing that from the left side before we, we would remove the multiplication. Okay, Just something for you to be aware of. And oh, here in B, we remove the negative 3, which is subtraction. Uh, in bed mass, that would be last. Um, we remove that before our multiplication, 4 times w. Um, so again, just following the steps of bed mass in opposite order when we're trying to isolate for a variable. Okay, and just recalling previous terms that we've learned um, in the first unit or in yesterday's lesson. So a constant term is a term that does not include um, a variable. So 4, negative 6, those are constants. Um, if we go back up here, a constant would be 8. It doesn't have a variable attached to it, or 11. Okay. And uh, when we're trying, when the question asks us to find the root, that means that it's just another way of saying solve for the unknown variable. So let's get into 4.2, which is building upon 4.1. Um, we're going to learn how to, uh, how we will learn how to. I should say solve more complex equations, which require several steps. Steps for solving multi-step equations. If there are any brackets in the equation, expand and simplify. Collect variables, uh, variable terms on one side of the equation, collect constant terms on the other side of the equation, and solve by isolating the variable. So let's look at this. 3x plus 2 is equal to 2x minus 4. Okay, so we have two unknown variable terms. Okay, so we want to collect like terms. 3x and 2x are like terms. They're both x terms. So we want them to be on the same side of the equal sign. 
uh, as each other. And then our constants, 2 and negative 4, we want those to be on the same side of the equal sign so that we can simplify those. Okay, so I'm just going to do a, a sort of a, a double switch where I'm going to move my, my 2x term to the left side, and I'm going to bring my positive 2 to the right side all in one step. Okay, remembering to switch the signs when we move it over to the other side of the equal sign. Okay, and then simplifying my left side, 3x minus 2x is x. Technically, it's 1x, but we just don't write that 1. When the coefficient is 1, we just don't include it. We understand that x means 1x. Negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. Okay, and we're done. Let's try the next one. So again, we have two x terms and two constants. So I'm going to do a double switch again, where I'm going to bring, this time I'm going to bring my x, my 6x over to the right side and my negative 1 to the left side. Okay, so I'm going to solve for x being on the right side of the equal sign, which is fine. You can solve for x to be on the left side or... In this case, it's going to be on the right side of the equal sign. Okay, so 5 plus 1 is equal to 9x minus 6x. 6 is equal to 3x. Divide both sides by 3. 2 is equal to x. Okay, and then finally, 4a minus 2 plus 7a plus 24 is all equal to zero. Okay, so before I start moving things over to the other side, I'm gonna collect and simplify like terms. 4a plus 7a minus two plus 24. Okay, so I just reordered so that my like terms are next to each other, and then I can simplify. 11a plus 22 is equal to zero. Okay, now I can start isolating from my variable. All right, sometimes your equations will have brackets. So before we can collect like terms and simplify like we did up here, we need to um, use the distributive property to expand out of the brackets. Okay, so we learned how to do this in unit one. So five times y is five y. Five times negative three is negative 15. And remember there's a little invisible one here in front of the bracket. So it's actually negative one times y, negative one times negative two. But we just don't have to write it. We understand that there is a, a one in front of that negative sign. But if it helps you to remember, we can just write that in. Okay, so negative one times y is negative y. Negative one times negative two is positive two. Okay. And uh, again, I'm going to um, collect my like terms on my left side before I move anything over to the right side. And simplifying like terms. And now I can start isolating from my variable. Okay, next, so 2x is, well, two, sorry, 2 times x is 2x. Two, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. And then I'm just going to write the negative 6 as is. 
Okay, uh, I can't simplify anything on my left side, but I can on my right. Um, so negative 3x, uh, I'll re rewrite it, and then negative 15 and negative 6, we can simplify to negative 21. And now I'm going to start collecting my like terms on one side of the equal sign and my other like terms on the other, and then simplifying. and then isolating my variable. Next, five times x is five x, five times two is 10. And then I'm just gonna rewrite negative three and negative 13. Okay, and then simplifying 10 and negative three And then bringing my 7 over to the right side it becomes its opposite operation. And then isolating for x by dividing both sides by 5, which is equal to negative 4. Okay, so here 8 subtract 3w plus 2. Negative 5 times w, negative 5w. Negative 5 times negative 3, negative is positive 15. Negative 1 times 4w, negative 4w. Negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. Okay, so collecting like terms on the left side and collecting like terms on the right side and then simplifying like terms on the left side and simplifying like terms on the right. Okay, and then now I'm going to collect all like terms on one side of the equal sign and the other like terms on the other side of the equal sign. Okay, and then dividing both sides by six to isolate W. Okay, and I'm going to make sure that my fraction is in um, its lowest terms as my final answer. So here's a word problem. Three angles are supplementary angles. So supplementary angles mean that they add up to all the angles, the three angles, add up to 180 degrees. If one angle is double the smallest angle and another angle is triple the smallest angle, find the measure, measure of all three angles. So I'm going to start off with a let statement like we learned yesterday. So my information is about is always compared to the smallest angle. So one is one angle is double the smallest angle, and the other is triple the smallest angle. So they're relative to the smallest angle. So I'm going to let x represent the smallest angle. Okay. So if my smallest angle is x, and I know that x plus something plus something is equal to 180 degrees. How am I going to write these other two angles? Well, one is double the smallest angle, which means that you take your smallest angle and you multiply it by two. And then the other angle is triple the smallest angle. So you take the smallest angle and you multiply it by three. Now we have an equation and now we can solve for x. So x plus 2x plus 3x is 6x. Okay, so that means that my smallest angle, is, which is equal to x, is actually equal to 30 degrees. My middle angle, which is equal to 2x, 
is actually equal to 2 times 30, which is equal to 60 degrees. And my largest angle, 3x, is actually 3 times 30, which is 90 degrees. Now remember that I said, when a question is presented to you in words, you're going to answer in words. Therefore, the three angles are 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. Now there are some homework questions here from 4.2 that I think are important for you to try before moving on to lesson 4.3, the second half of this lesson. Lesson 4.3 is solving multi-step equations with fractions. So all these questions are multi-step question equations, but none of them have fractions. So we're just gonna take it one more step further by, by applying fractions to our equations. Okay, so uh, questions A and B, they have one fraction, so one fraction and one fraction. So when you're simplifying with one fraction, clear the fraction by multiplying all terms on both sides of the equation by the denominator of the fraction, okay? Now when you have more than one fraction, you're gonna find the lowest common denominator, which we'll talk about uh, on the next page. So let's just solve using uh, involving one fraction. So all terms must be multiplied by the denominator of that one fraction, which in A is three. So all terms, this is a term, this is a term, on both sides of the, of the, of the equal sign must be multiplied by the denominator. So my next step, my next line is three times six is equal to three times one over three which is then multiplied by eight plus X. Okay, I'm doing this so that I can do this. Eliminate the denominator, get rid of the fraction so that simplifying and solving is much easier for you. Okay, the left side, three times six is 18. And then we'll, we've, we've um, eliminated the, the numerator and denominator three. So now I'm just left with one times eight plus X. And one times eight plus X is the same thing as saying eight plus X. And now I'm going to collect my like terms on one side and uh, isolate for my X. Let's try another one. In B, I have one fraction, the denominator is three. So I'm gonna multiply all terms in my equal sign, um, in my equation on both sides of the equal sign by three. Remember, whatever you do to the left side, you must do to the right. So that's why we have to multiply uh, both sides of the equation by three. Okay, so this is gonna be three times two over three, which is then multiplied by five minus K. But this one more thing is that two over three times five minus K, that is one entire term. So you don't need to multiply three by two over three and then separately by five minus K. This whole left side is one term. I know this because it's connected by a multiplication sign. If this was instead two over three plus five minus K, then that would be two separate terms. But since it's not separated by an addition or subtraction, it's one whole term. Look at the two over three as the coefficient in front of a bracket. The coefficient is included in the entire term of the bracket. Okay, so I'm left with two times five minus K 
6. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times negative k is negative 2k. Then I'm going to isolate for my variable. Okay, let's try two more that have um, only one denominator. Now, these two are written differently than these two on this page. So these two on this page, the fraction is written in front of the bracket, okay? Whereas over here, the fraction is written underneath the bracket. So this right here is the same as saying one over five times X minus 17, because if you multiplied one times X minus 17, and five times the, the invisible denominator one that x minus 17 has, you would get x minus 17 over five, which is what's written over here. So sometimes it can be presented like this, where you have um, the fraction um, multiplied with um, the the bracket or whatever is binomial, trinomial is in brackets beside um, the fraction. Or it could be written like this, where you have a fraction in front of the binomial or trinomial or whatever you have inside the brackets. It means the same thing though. This says one over three times or times eight plus x. 8 plus x, okay, which e would equal um, 8 plus x over 3. So it means the same thing. It's just written in two different ways. Okay, let's solve. So we still want to get rid of our denominator because fractions are just more confusing it's much easier for us to solve when there's no fraction. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation, or all terms, by 5. So my next line is 5 times x minus 17 over 5 is equal to 5 times negative 3. And then my 5s cancel out. And I'm just left with x minus 17 is equal to negative 15. Okay, and hopefully you understand why these fives cancel out before I move on and complete this question. Because again, remember this is five times everything in the bracket, but every whole number has an, an invisible denominator of one. Okay, so we are doing some cross reduction here which hopefully you have some experience from elementary doing this. Um, you could expand and multiply five times X, five times negative 17, and then reduce the fraction, but it's much, much, much easier if you just cross reduce here. Okay, moving on. Um, all right. Next, I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. So 4 times 3 times y minus 5 over 4, and then 4 times 7. Again, my 4s are canceling out, which is what I want. Or 4 times 7 is 28. 3y minus 15, 3y is equal to 28 plus 15, and then I can't reduce that fraction, so I'm just going to leave it as is. Okay, so if it has 
<clears throat> what if your equation has more than one fraction and they have different denominators? Well, you have to find a lowest common denominator. So let's look at our denominators. We have three and four in the first question. So what is the lowest common multiple of three and four? Well, 12. So my lowest common denominator for this question is 12. I guess you can write it a little bit closer. Okay. So I'm going to multiply both terms by 12 in order to cancel out my denominator. So my next line is 12 times 1 over 3, which is then going to be multiplied by x, 2x minus 5 is equal to 12 times 3 over 4, which we then will multiply by x minus 2. Okay, so again, I want to get rid of my denominator 3. So 12 divided by 3 is 4. So I have 4 left over on the left side. And on the right, I want to get rid of my denominator 4. So 12 divided by 4 is 3. So I have 3 left over. So my next line is 3 times 1 times 2x minus 5 equals equal to 3 times 3 times x minus 2. Okay, so this 3, oh, sorry, wait, this should be 4. Ooh. Okay, let me, re let me re say this. My goal is to get rid of my denominator 3. So I'm multiplying it by the lowest common multiple between my original denominators, so 12. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking my 12 and I'm essentially dividing it by 3. And that is equal to 4. So I have 4 left over, which means that on my next line, I have to multiply whatever is over here by 4. Okay? So I'm writing this 4, I'm writing down here. The numerator right here, which is 1, I have to rewrite down here. And then I'm rewriting this entire binomial here. That's what's left over on my left side. Okay, on my right side, I want to get rid of my denominator 4. So again, 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3. I have 3 left over. So I'm rewriting my 3 down here. This 3 is rewritten here. And then my binomial here is written down here. Okay. Next line, 4 times 1, 4 times 2x minus 5. Is equal to 3 times 3 is 9, x minus 2. 4 times 2x is 8x. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. 9 times x, 9x. 9 times negative 2, negative 18. Bringing all my x terms to one side and all my constants on the other. So I'm going to write negative x. I'm not going to write negative 1x. I understand that negative x means that the coefficient is negative 1. So negative x is equal to 2. Okay, and I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1 so that I cancel out that negative in front of the x. Because I'm not trying to find, I'm not solving for negative x, I'm solving for x. So I need to make sure that my x is positive at the end. Okay, let's try one more time over here with, with b. So again, what's my lowest common denominator? Between 2 and 3, the lowest common multiple is 6. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 6. 6 times 1 over 2 times x minus 3 is equal to 6 times 1 over 3x. 
So 6 divided by 2, 3 left over. 6 divided by 3, 2 left over. So my next line is 3 times 1 times x minus 3 is equal to 2 times 1 times x. 3 times 1 is 3. 2 times 1 is 2. 3x minus 9 is equal to 2x. 3x minus 2x is equal to 9. x is equal to 9. Okay. We're going to try two more. And if you can understand this, this is, this is as difficult as this lesson gets. So hopefully you're with me. If not, stop, pause this recording, message me on Remind, email me, make sure that you understand what is happening here. So question A and B here in C and D, these are the hardest questions of this lesson. So um, hopefully you're you're still understanding and you're still getting the same answers as me when you're trying it on your own. Okay, here we go. So I have denominator four and five. So my lowest common denominator is 20. Okay, so 20 times one over four times two X minus one is equal to 20 times three over five times X plus seven. Okay. 20 divided by 4, 5 left over. 20 divided by 5, 4 left over. 5 times 1 times 2x minus 1 is equal to 4 times 3 times x plus 7. 5 times 2x minus 1 is equal to 12 times x plus 7. 10x minus 5 is equal to 12x plus 84. Negative 5 minus 84 is equal to 12x minus 10x. Negative 89 is equal to 2x. Negative 89 over 2 is equal to x. I can't reduce this fraction any further, so I'm just going to leave it just like that. Okay, D. My denominators are 4, 3, 2, and 1. This is a pretty challenging question, question D. You have a constant. Now remember I said any whole number actually has an invisible denominator of 1. We just don't write it. And if we go back to the rules, when simplifying when there's more than one fraction, you need to find the lowest common denominator and multiply all the terms with that lowest common denominator. So let's find the lowest common denominator between all terms. This is a term, this is a term, this is a term, this is a term. How do I know they're terms? They're, they're separated by either an equal sign, an addition sign, or a subtraction sign. So the lowest common denominator between all my terms, 4, 1, 3, and 2. Well, the lowest common denominator here would be 12. Okay? So lowest common denominator between all the, the denominators of the term, so we're going to multiply this 12 by all the terms. So the next line is 12 times 3x over 4 plus 12 times 5 is equal to 12 times 4x minus 1 divided by 3 plus 12 times x over 2. So all the terms got multiplied by 12. OK? 
okay? All right, let's, we're, let's get rid of our fractions now. 12 divided by four is three. 12 and five, that's good. And uh, there's no fraction here, so we're fine. Uh, 12 divided by three is four. And 12 divided by two is six. So then my next line is three times three X plus 12 times five is 60. I can just simplify that now. E is equal to four times four X minus one plus six X. Three times three X is nine X plus 60 is equal to four times four X is 16 X minus four plus six X. Okay, so before I start moving values around, I'm just going to collect like terms on my right side and then simplify my right side. Okay, and now I'm going to collect my like terms. Okay, so my X terms are my right side it could be on your left, whatever you want. Just make sure that your signs are correct. And I can't reduce that fraction any further, so that's my answer. 64 over 13. Okay, so that was a challenging question. Well. All four of them were pretty challenging, but D was definitely the most challenging. Um, when fractions are separated by an equal sign, you can actually use cross multiplication to eliminate the denominators. So you can use lowest common denominator. So here would be 15, or what you can do because these two fractions are separated by a, an equal sign, and there's no other terms on either side. It's just two terms separated by a multiple, um, an equal sign, and they are both fractions. What you can actually do is apply cross multiplication, which means that you're going to multiply this denominator by the numerator in the other side of the equal sign and then this denominator by the numerator on the other side of the equal sign, okay? So again, k plus 12 will be multiplied by five, and k minus four will be multiplied by three, okay? So we call this cross multiplication because it kind of look, makes an, a cross or an x um, with, the, with what you're actually doing. Five times k plus two, is equal to three times k minus four. Okay, so I've eliminated my, deno my denominators or my fractions. So this five, I multiplied it by k plus two, okay? And then this three, I multiplied it by k minus four. Okay, so remember you can only use this when these two fractions are separated by an equal sign. Okay, let me rewrite this now without all this highlight. So five K plus two, three K minus four. Okay, five K plus 10 is equal to three K minus 12. Five K minus three K is equal to negative 12 minus 10. Two K is equal to negative 22. K is equal to negative 22 over two. K is equal to negative 11. So let's try this one more time. Using cross multiplication, three times Y plus two is equal to nine times Y minus three. Three Y plus six is equal to nine Y minus 27. Six plus 27 is equal to 9y minus 3y. 33 over 6 is equal to 6y over 6. 
11 over 2 is equal to y. Okay. So remember to check. So remember we learned how to check last lesson. Okay, so we're just going to make sure that we got the, our right answer for the last, very last question of this lesson. Um, I would always encourage you to check for all of your answers, especially when you're completing one of the quizzes, performance tasks, or tests. Make sure that you're just checking on a separate piece of paper for yourself before you push submit. You want to make sure that you're getting the right answer. So let's practice just checking on one of the questions, this last one. So the left side, I'm going to go back to my original question. So here's the left side. I'm going to write that down over here. Okay, and the right side of my equal sign is right here. I'm going to write that down. Okay, so now wherever I see y, I'm going to plug in the value that I solved for. Okay, so now I'm going to just focus on one side of the, the table at a time. So I'll do the left side first. So we do have a fraction over a fraction, which looks really intimidating, but I promise you it's not. So I'm just going to focus on my numerator, 11 over 2 plus 2. Okay, so when you're adding, when one fraction, one is a fraction and one is not a fraction, you want to create two fractions and you want them to both have the same denominator. So I'm gonna leave 11 over two as is, and now I'm gonna convert this two into a fraction that would also have the denominator of two. So that would be my fraction. And remember, that's all over nine. Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna add 11 over two plus four over two, which is 15 over two, which is then divided by nine. Okay, another way of writing it is like this. Okay, um, and remember, every whole number has an invisible denominator of one. Now, when I remember from elementary school, recall that previous knowledge that when you're dividing fractions, you're actually going to take the reciprocal of the second fraction and multiply. That's not the reciprocal. That's the reciprocal. Okay, so now 15 times one is 15. Uh, two times nine is 18. Reduce the fraction, nine over five over six. Okay, let's see if we get five over six on the right side. So again, I'm going to, on my numerator, I have a fraction and a whole number, so I'm gonna convert my negative three into a fraction with the same denominator as 11 over 2. And that's all divided by 3. So 11 minus 6 is 5 over 2, which is then divided by 3. Okay, another way of writing that is like this. And then when you're dividing fractions, you take the reciprocal of the second fraction And then you multiply. Five times one is five. Two times three is six. And we actually did end up getting the same answer on both sides. So we did, act, we did get this, the correct value for y, which is 11 over two. So here's just a recap of how to solve um, equations that are multi-step and complicated and then there are some homework questions for you to try if you wish and you can always message me if you have any questions